We're going to explore Adobe Firefly's text image generator, which is now currently in beta on the Adobe website. If you have a Creative Cloud account, you can access the beta by going to the link in the description below, at least at the time of recording, as far as I can tell. So we end up in this page here, meet Adobe Firefly. Now in Photoshop, we simply go down to explore Firefly to check it out. When you land, you'll see a text image section you can go to and click generate. And you can actually go into any of these and start generating off that style. So this is not a bad way to go. You can also just simply type down the bottom here. So, but let's say I want to work on a picture that's a lot like this one here, retro futuristic boombox. It comes up and it says retro futuristic boombox and it has the uh, has some settings over here on the right. So I can change boombox if I want to, to retro futuristic walkie talkie. You give it a moment to generate and we get our retro futuristic walkie talkie, which is pretty cool. But uh, like I said, if we go back, if you don't want to go about it that way, when you land, it can be a bit hidden. It doesn't really stand out, but down the bottom, you actually have here where you can actually come up with an image. So once again, if I type in here, 3D artwork for dog wearing a jacket and hat and click generate, then we get our image. So I've zoomed in a little bit, uh, but you can see here, we get a very 3D look. It's pretty cool. Uh, these images here, if you have a look, you can scroll through, you can download them anytime. There's no upscale. They're already at full resolution, but if I download this image, it'll apply credentials in the bottom corner. So we have this image here, which at its square native resolution is 1024 by 1024 pixels. And at the moment we do get this little bit in the corner here. I assume that once they're out of beta, they will be removing that. So the way it works is pretty straightforward. This is a very user-friendly interface that they've come up with. And the idea is you've got at the top here aspect ratio. You've got a few to choose from. And you've also then got styles. You can choose to show them all or just go through the popular styles, concepts and things like that. Change color and tone, lighting, composition, and that kind of thing. So let's say we want to have two people walking in front of the pyramids. I can go up. I want to change the aspect ratio. This time we're going to go to widescreen, 16 to 9. It's already starting to generate. But I actually want this to be a photo. It can be a graphic, art or I can simply choose none and let it do its own thing. But I'm gonna choose photo. And from there, I've got some different sort of concepts. You can see it's come up with some art already based off what I've, I've put in there, but I'm gonna go through and find something else. So maybe techniques. So you've got things like oil painting, palette knife, acrylic painting, doodles or drawing, effects like fisheye, misty, dark, isometric. Maybe we can add concepts, themes. I'm actually gonna go with product photo, even though it's not a product photo. I just wanna see what kind of results we get. But under the color and tone, I could choose it to be vibrant or pastel. So you get some cool uh, effects. We'll go for a warm tone since it's gonna be outdoors. Lighting, we're gonna say, let's go golden hour. So it's later in the day. Composition, we're gonna go wide angle. And now we've got all these filters down here. We can click X to get rid of them or clear the styles, but we just hit generate. And these are the results we get. So some of these look pretty real. You click on this one here, you've got a fairly realistic looking photograph. Not until you actually get up close to you see some of the wonky sort of features. It's not quite as advanced as some of the others out there, but it does have its own flavor, which I think is pretty cool. So you can see here, if you zoom up, these images don't look great up close. But something like this where the people facing away can be a really good image to use in a lot of different ways. Uh, like I said, you don't want to be zooming in on the people, but you do get some really good images of the pyramids themselves. Um, so again, this image is 16 to nine. So the size of that is 1792 by 1024 pixels. And of course, if you change the aspect ratio around, you get a few different sizes. If you switch it and go nine to 16 instead of 16 to nine, you're basically just switching the resolution around because you get 1024 wide by 1792. So again, you go four to three and the image you get is 1408 by 1024. And when you switch it around the other way, again, it's inverted at 1024 by 1408. Essentially what you're getting is a canvas that is 1024 wide by one dimension and it expands in the other direction beyond 1024 depending on what that aspect ratio is. So that's handy to know when you're considering what resolution you're going to make these images using Adobe Firefly. But let's play around with something again. Let's go clear styles and we go back to our, uh, we're going to say cute dog wearing a jacket and sunglasses headphones. 
and we can go through again. This time I'm going to go with graphic. And we're just going to cycle through these and see what results we get. So some of these images are really actually quite cool. I really like this one here. You see how you get some really cool cartoony results when using these fil these uh, options. And uh, if you give it something fun, it actually does a pretty good job. We switch it over to photo. We get similar composition with different results. Now, one thing is funny. This one has eyes on the top of its head, which I think is a little bit funny. Uh, this one, while there's nothing weird on it, it does have a strange shape. But uh, so far, I think this one's probably the best. It doesn't do too bad with the photorealism, but you can tell it struggles when it comes to features we're used to seeing, like faces and things like that. But uh, this one here is actually not too bad. And this one here is not bad either, but I'd say this one's probably the winner, probably the best of the lot. But now if we go to none, it will once again generate some more. And we get something that's a little bit mixed. It's not really photographic, it's not really art, it's kind of somewhere in the middle. But we can also come down here and choose something like pixel art. And maybe even come down again, we can go lighting. We can choose studio, studio lighting, composition. We'll go close up and see what we get with that pixel art, studio lighting, close up. And it's not actually pixel art, but it is very cool. It's a very stylized retro 80s look. Uh, I think it actually does a pretty good job with what you give it. And um, we've got sort of like water in the glasses here. So it's a very cool and stylized results. So it's a pretty basic platform to play with. If you are not some kind of great prompt engineer, like you might be for Mid Journey or someone else, you can go through and explore the effects. So like antique photo, and uh, we'll get rid of the pixel art. So we've got antique photo in there. Um, materials, so fur, marble. You can really play and just basically explore the settings and keep your prompt pretty basic. As you can see, we now have a completely different result again. This dog is looking a little bit different and a little bit more realistic and a little bit more muted. And this one here, the photo realism is actually a little bit better in these as well. So you can see by playing with these filters, although this one has four, four eyes like the other one, you can actually really tailor your results. And it's a very user-friendly way of doing AI image generation. I highly recommend checking that out. And if you check out some of, so like I said, I've created some images before, but I also played around with some space shots and things like that. And it looks very arty, very arti artistic and digital, not very photorealistic, but some of the images of people the faces do start to lose some of the quality. Some of them look really good from afar until you zoom in and can see some of the weird sort of bits and pieces that it adds in there. But uh, it's still the early days of Firefly. I think it has a lot of potential to create some really good art. So that's essentially how you can use it. It's a very straightforward um, platform. You can try different art styles, different photo styles and uh, really have a play. But otherwise, those are the basics. I've got some links in the description if you wanna check this stuff out. Otherwise, I hope you found that useful and gave it a bit of a rundown how this works. So if you like the video, please consider giving it a like. I'm gonna be doing a ton more Adobe videos. I've got some already with generative fill and Photoshop. So check those out on my channel. Otherwise, thanks for watching the video. Have a great day and see you again soon.